have been exceedingly lucky in my lifetime to have had many amazing teachers. One of the standouts had a favorite quote. It was from Lao Tzu, a Chinese philosopher who lived six centuries before Jesus. It was, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. One of my favorite things that the Gospels show us is how often the disciples just don't understand Jesus. There are times when Jesus breaks down his lessons, but other times where his parables seem to be using the questions they leave us with as part of the teaching tool. Their teacher has appeared, has called them near to him, but they are still not quite ready. But now, at what we call the Last Supper, which is illustrated so beautifully in the carving behind our high altar, Jesus knows that his time with his beloveds is running short. Little children, he says, I am with you only a little longer. That night around the table, Jesus knows what the night and the next day will bring. Still, he eats with every one of them, knowing that one of them will deny him, and one of them has already sold him out to the authorities. He knows that where he is going, they cannot follow. His heart is filled with grief and fear that becomes so clear later when he prays in Gethsemane. Throughout this, what does Jesus do with these never quite ready 12 in these last moments with them? He assures them that the Holy Spirit will come to them. He blesses them with the peace that only he can give. Most importantly, in this passage we just heard from the Gospel of John, he teaches them three essential things. First, he teaches them how to remember him, how to continue to encounter his presence through the Holy Eucharist, how to perform a rite that from generation to generation has connected Christians through centuries and all over this planet in a line that goes back and back and back to that first night when Jesus took the cup and took the bread. Then he washes their feet. Jesus doesn't just talk about service and humility. He becomes the very embodiment of it, kneeling, pouring water over their dusty feet until they are clean and cool. He reminds us that servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. Stay humble. Remember who we work for. Remember that you can do nothing without God. Then, having taught them how to remember him, having reminded them who they are charged to serve, he distills all of his teachings into one a new way to look at the teachings of the laws of Moses that have ruled their faith. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. It's this teaching that is why Maundy Thursday is called Maundy Thursday, the Novum Modatum. It's the root for our English word mandate or command and the Latin for new. It was finally shortened up tidally by the English into Mondi. It's Jesus' final earthly lesson. Love each other. Strive to perfectly love each other. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Christ teaches us that this way of being, what St. Benedict beautifully called extending the courtesy of love to everyone, is the very identifying feature of disciples of Christ. And it's a mandate and not a request or a mere suggestion because Jesus knows that sometimes it will be easy, but sometimes it will be less so. When his time to teach was running out, three things, love one another, serve one another, remember our savior in communion. All of these things link us directly to Jesus. No degrees of separation 
between us and our Savior. Combined, they are a perfect prescription for how to be a Christian. On his final night, Jesus not only prepared to redeem us, he built our way of life. He taught us all how to be Christians. Tonight, over 2,000 years later, are we ready? When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. But that's not the entire lesson from the Tao Te Ching. The entire lesson is, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. When the student is truly ready, the teacher will disappear. In another part of John's account of the Last Supper, Jesus promises, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. Jesus, our precious teacher, knows he is disappearing, but not leaving. We may envy the disciples who had the living, breathing Jesus walking beside them. But I feel confident that I, they would envy us our knowledge of how the story is still continuing. Jesus rose. Jesus lives. Jesus is beside us to the end of the age. We need only slow down, open our hearts, and notice. Let us all be ready for whatever God, our creator, shows us as we walk with Jesus, our teacher and redeemer, towards the cross, into and then out of the tomb. May the Spirit inspire us to serve others. May we truly feel Christ's presence at the table. And may we love one another, just as Christ is still loving us. Amen.